Welcome to the Unit 4 Lesson 6 video. Um, when you go ahead and fill out these warm-up questions, it says fill in the missing operation for each of the statements. Remember, for multiplication, we want to use the dot and not an X. So yes, dot, no X. Crossing out an X doesn't really work very well, but hopefully you get the picture. So plus, minus, multiply, or divide. Fill in to make that thing true. Pause the video, work those out, unpause it, and then see how you did. So for number one, we should have multiply. 3 times 6 is 18. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 3 plus 6 is 9. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 3, 27 plus 3 is 30. 4 times 3 equals 12. 6, or excuse me, 3 minus 6 is negative 3. 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. So today we're going to be using add, subtract, multiply, and divide to figure out how to get from a, an input table of values to an output table of values. And we'll see what that means here in just a second. So this right here is called a table or a table of values. We have an input, which is all of these numbers, and we have an output, which is all of these numbers. So what is happening is when we put this number into, I'm gonna call it a function, it's just a, a machine, it's going to take the input number and then give out the output number in that same row. So like these numbers are matched up and those and those. You have to have the exact same thing happening for each of the rows of the input values. Okay, it's the same function every single time. So if we look at this, there's a few ways we can get, I usually start the first one, there's a few ways we can get from negative one to negative two. For example, we could add a negative 1, which is the same thing as subtracting 1. That would work. Now, that's not enough to say that that's my answer, because it needs to be that same thing for all of the pairs. So if I try it for that next pair, 4 plus negative 1, or 0 plus negative 1. I don't even know why I said 4. 0 plus negative 1 does not equal 0, so that means that plus negative 1 is not the change that's happening. So I need to try something different. So I go back to the beginning and start over. To get from negative 1 to negative 2, not using plus negative 1 or subtract 1, I would have to multiply by 2. Okay, and if I check the next one, 0 times 2 is 0. Okay, check the next one. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6. So the function is multiplying all of the input values by 2 to give me an output value. So the input is what we put into the function. The output is what the function gives out. So we could put in another value, like if 5 was another input, I would multiply that by 2. My output would be 10. If I put in 125, I would times by 2, we get 250. It doesn't matter um, what you plug in for this function. When you plug a number in, the function is going to say, take that number, multiply it by 2, and that's your new number. All right? So we write this as x times 2, so y equals x times 2. For our output is y, our input is x. All right? So all of these numbers are from here. All of these numbers go right there. And then times 2, times 2. So we always say our output equals our input number. In this case, it's times 2. It could be plus 2, it could be divided by 3, minus 5, whatever it may be. You're always going to have an x and a y. We have our x value on the left in the input because we just put things in alphabetical order. But our equation, our function, is going to be y equals because you're going to do something to the number you plug in to get an output number. That output number stands by itself. So that's why y is by itself. So for this table of values, I'm going to go through it without um, splitting it up just so we can kind of see what it would look like actually writing this with paper and pencil. So I'm going to first look at negative 5 to negative 1. There are two ways that I can get there. I can multiply by 5 or divide by 5, excuse me, or I could add 4. So I basically pick one. doesn't really matter which one. I could say divide by 5. Because 5 divided by 5 is 1, negative divided by a positive is negative. So that's good. But I would have to do that to the next step. And 0 divided by 5 
does not equal 4. So then I say, okay, it's not divide by 5. I erase what I did, and I pick my other option. My other option was plus 4. If I add 4 to 0, I do get 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. 2 plus 4 is 6. 3 plus 4 is 7. So my rule is my output, which is my y, is equal to my input, which is x, plus 4. Because that's what I said for every single one of those things right there. So another way to say this in words is my output is equal to my input plus 4, or my output is 4 more than my input. So like I said, I was doing it without breaking it up. They're breaking it up to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to scroll on past. So when we're working with tables, we need to think about the questions below and make sure we can answer them. First thing is, can we use guess and check to find a pattern that works for every input and the corresponding output? The answer to that is yes, you absolutely can try guess and check. That's what I do 100% of the time. There's really not, not, a, not a way to know exactly what the answer is without trying a few things. You might get it wrong, that's okay. And then just keep trying. Second one is, can you make up an input not in the table and then predict what the output will be after the change? Absolutely. That's what we did in the first example. Once you know the rules for that function, once you know what it does, you can plug in any number that you want and see what it would spit out. So we've got a couple of problems here. It says, describe the pattern in the table using words, write the algebraic expression, then write the, alge uh, then write the algebraic equation. All that means... So for an example, we had y equals x times 2, right? This is an equation. The expression would have just been x times 2. So the only difference between algebraic expression and equation, expression is just x times 2 plus 5 minus 3, whatever the number it was. There's no y. The algebraic equation, you'll have y equals whatever your expression was. So you need to describe the pattern in words. So say things like the input is equal to the, or the output is equal to the input plus four, or the output is um, 10 more or 10 less than the input, something like that. I need the words output and input. All right, go ahead, pause the video, give it a shot. Um, if you get stuck, unpause it, see how you did, um, or see how to do it. And if you don't get stuck, unpause it and see how you did. So for this first one, my first guess is plus 6. 3 plus 6 is 9, but 6 plus 6 is not 18, so that's not it. So i got to try something else. 3 times 3 is 9. 6 times 3 is 18. 9 times 3 is 27. 12 times 3 is 36. So the output is the input times 3 or three times the input is the output, something like that. My expression is going to be x times three. My equation is y equals x times three. You might write it this way instead, y equals three times x, that's the same thing. And it looks a little bit nicer. Generally, we put the number in front of the variable. For number two, I'm gonna start off by guessing minus four, 10 minus four is six. 9 minus 4 is 5, 8 minus 4 is 4, 7 minus 4 is 3. So it looks like I got the right thing on my first guess. So the output is 4 less than the input. What that means is if I take my input minus 4, I get my output. So my expression is x minus 4. My equation is y equals x minus 4. All right, next we're going to do a few percent problems. So we're going to start off doing one kind of filling in the things that we know. So in this case, we're saying, what do we do when we don't know the percent off? So Jill wants to buy a pair of shoes that used to cost $60 but are now on sale for $45. Her mom will only bet, let her buy the shoes if she can calculate the discounted percent off, help Jill find the percent off. So we know the original price is $60. We know the sale price is $45. It does not explicitly tell us what the discount amount is, but if I know the original and I know the sale, the difference is that discount, which is $15. I got that by 60 minus 45. 
All right. So I don't know what my percent discount is, but my percent discount, if I'm going discount to original cost, my first fraction, $15 out of 60. My second one is a percent. We don't know the percent discount, but we know our percent is always out of 100. So even though I put original cost, remember the second um, fraction is kind of like um, percents. So it's always out of 100. Now solve for X, that'll tell us what our percent discount is. So there's a few ways you can go about doing this. Horizontal one does not really work all that great. Vertical does, but it might be harder to see. But you can always simplify and go from there. But since I know that 60 divided by 4 is 15, I'm just going to divide to get x equals, well, 10 divided, or 100 divided by 4 is 25. That's a quarter. So this is as a percent. So the discount, or the percent discount, I should just fill in the blank, I suppose is going to be 25, not just written like this, I need the percent symbol. So it's a 25% discount. All right, now there's another way you can do um, these problems. I'm not really gonna go into it right now. Uh, basically, it would just be subtracting later on in the problem. So you've got, I think it's three questions. Yeah, three questions to go through and do. So solve the following discount problems. Um, about all the services that Aero Tires provides its loyal customers, make sure your answer makes sense. So if you're looking for a percent discount, they're never going to give you a discount of 100% or more because then they're not making any money. So make sure your answer makes sense. You're not going to have a negative percent either. Um, so go ahead, work through those problems, see how you did when you're done, unpause it, and I will go through them. So number one, Aero Tires has a sale on new tires that come in sets of four tires. They are no longer making the brand, so it's being discounted. The original price for a set of these tires is $400, and now they are on sale for $300. The tires are being sold for what percent off? So off to the side, I'm gonna write my original cost is 400. My sale price is 300. My discount, 400 minus 300, is 100. So my original cost and my discount compared, so my discount of $100, original cost of 400 is equal to X over 100%. Okay, just like that last problem. And just like that last problem, we're gonna divide by four using our vertical method to get that X equals 25. So the tires are on sale for 25% off. Number two, Aero Tires offers a weekend discount on oil changes to its loyal customers. The usual price for an oil change, the usual, that's our original, is $40. But it's going to be $30 for this weekend only. So for the sale, it's $30. The oil change is what percent off? Well, my discount is 10 bucks. So 10 out of 40 is equal to X out of 100. And for the third time in a row, we're going to divide by 4 to get X equals 25. So the oil change. is on sale for 25% off. Now, even though we did it for three problems in a row, that does not mean you're always just gonna divide by four and get 25%. You gotta be careful. We just happened to get nice numbers that always worked out to be 25%. So number three, there's an A and a B. So Aero Tires is sending out coupons in the mail for other great specials for its loyal customers. The chart below shows special discount prices on everyday services. The sale prices will only be good until the end of the month. So for part A, the tune-up is an amazing deal. All right, so I'm looking at that top row in the table. 
The tune-up is on sale for what percent off? So original cost is 80. Sale price is 20. So my discount is 60. 80 minus 20 is 60. So I'm going to take 60 for my discount over my original of 80 is equal to X out of 100. This is one where I'm not going to be dividing by 4 vertically. First step I'm going to do is I'm going to try to simplify this. So 60 over 80 is the same thing as 6 over 8. It still doesn't give me nice numbers, but 6 out of 8 is the same thing as 3 out of 4. Divide top and bottom by 2. Now I can multiply going across by 25. 3 times 25 is 75, so the tune-up is on sale for 75% off. So they weren't kidding and they said that was a good deal. For B, I'll use the blue highlighter. Gina's car is about to break down. She needs a new transmission. Transmission repair is right there. So my original cost of the transmission is 160. My sale price is 120. So my discount, if I subtract those two, 160 minus 120 is $40. Uh, oh, darn it. Hopefully that doesn't ruin everything. My iPad decided I wanted to close one note for the day. And we are almost done. So bear with me while this thing opens back up. Alright, so the discount we said was $40. So $40 out of the original 160 is equal to X percent out of 100 percent. I'm going to kind of scribble out those zeros because if I divide top and, bottom, top and bottom both by 10, I would get 4 out of 16. I can get from 16 to 4 by dividing by 4. So again, we get X equals 25. The transmission repair is on sale for 25% off. So there was your day six or your lesson six notes. Make sure you're working on your homework. I hope everybody has a great day.